welcome back to another episode of Book and Lunch Days. So today we're going to be making porridge. Um, porridge is a very interesting food. It's pretty much covered the entire world almost because that concept of porridge is really just any kind of grain, um, rice, wheat, or anything like that, and you boil it, and then with a lot of water, and then there you go. But then. Um, a more Asian way of making it, which is the way I'm doing it today, um, it's definitely with white rice. So there are two ways that you can make it. One is some people oh, consider it cheating because it will be adding um, just cook white rice and then you add water to it and then you boil it. Um, it will take less time because, I mean, the rice is already cooked but then some people consider it as cheating. Um, and then, but the real way is definitely with um, non-cooked rice. So it actually take a while for um, porridge to cook. So I already cooked it. The most important thing when you're cooking porridge is a proportion, like the ratio between rice and water. The proportion that I personally like to use, and this is my rice cup, um, this is a measuring cup that I use for rice. So I usually go with one cup of rice and five to seven cups of um, of water. So it's one one cup rice to five to seven, depends on how thick you want it. Um, so here is my porridge. I think it's um, mostly already cooked, but I will be adding other stuff to it. The great thing about porridge is that you can pretty much make it into anything you have in the fridge, even just egg. Even if you just have egg and rice, you can make a really good porridge out of it. Um, I will be adding some veggie and some pork. These are just items that I grab on my fridge that, you know, it will work. Um, but there are some more traditional porridge dishes in the Asian tradition, which are, you know, with pork and the preserved duck egg that I have here. But this, this kind of stuff is really hard to find in regular market. Um, and it was ranked one of the weirdest food um, by CN a while ago. So I don't want to scare you guys because it does look a little scary to people that doesn't, that never had it. So I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to use regular egg. And it is hard to find in a regular market. You have to go to Asian market to find it. Um, yes. So let's start cooking. I Like I said, I already boiled my porridge. It's not completely, you know, cooked yet because uh, I'm adding other stuff. So I am going to let it boil, but I'm going to steamer it. So um, you do want to make sure it's cooked through. And it doesn't take that long. You just have to blast it. And once it's you know, cooked at full flame fire, then you can turn the heat low. You have to turn the heat low. Otherwise, um, the foam will start um, filling up. And, you can, if you, and then you can decide. I usually, at that point, then I decide how thick. I want it and I might be adding more water or decide not to add any water to it. All right, that's let's start cutting. Um, I have two cutting board here because I'm going to separate the one I cut veggie and the one I cut my pork. Um, the way I'm going to cut the pork is actually really simple. You don't have to do any specific way. I'm just going to cut it into a very thin slices and then um, cut it horizontally again. Nothing very tricky there. Just cut it as small, that's the point. Alright. Alright, so the history of porridge. The um the reason why I had to look it up because it's mainly because I always have issue looking for the correct word um to translate. Because there's so many different English translation when when um, we're talking about this item this food item and I will see a different um, a different translation on many different menus that you can find um, around the country so that's why I always have a difficulty like uh, explaining this food to some people 
So the porridge is actually a European word, um, but back then, um, you no, know, the European they use um, oat oatmeal. So it's technically oatmeal, but that's what the word we use in America. But in, in Europe, they really probably would still use porridge as their um, oat um, as the the word that they would use for oatmeal. But um, when if in America it would be regarded as a Chinese or Asian dish because not just Chinese have it. Um, in Japan, Korean, Thai, Vietnamese, almost every single Asian country that and in India that you can find a similar food item um, with so basically rice cooked with a lot of water um, and make it very thick. Do want to keep an eye on your porridge when it's cooking because it will foam up and then disaster will happen in your kitchen and you have a lot to clean up. So always keep an eye on that and you don't also don't want it to burn. All right, back to the history um, of translating. Um, the other translation that sometimes you will find in a Chinese restaurant is kokonji, C-O-U-N-G-E-E. -E. Let me put on my cheat sheet. C-O-N-G-E-E. Oh, -E. C-O-N-G-E-E, -E, that is another word that you can find on some of the Chinese, older Chinese restaurant or the reason is that it's, that's actually a Indian, not Indian, Indian is not a language. It's one of the, they're like in India's um, phrase for it, um, word for it. And that's because porridge or kanji is traditionally from, originally from India that went to Europe and that's why they call it that way. I found out today, I was thinking that's fascinating. I'm done cutting my pork. I am going to add a little bit of rice wine to it to get rid of the porky smell. Smell. Um, and if you don't like pork, you don't have to add it in. And if you are still fasting, you can definitely use fish instead of pork. There's no biggie here. And again, I'm just gra grabbing random stuff from my fridge to, to make this dish. Because we had a training with the library today. Um, so I didn't have time to go shopping. Um, so I'm just grabbing random stuff from my fridge and which fit the theme. Like you don't really need to have anything fancy and you can if you want to. My mom used to make like really fancy porridge. Um, like, you know, scallop and anything like shrimp, um, taro, a bunch of um, really fancy materials and it was delicious. And this is the food that you will know when you're sick, your mom will make for you um, with chicken and egg. So this is the kind of food that's perfect for any occasion and usually in the winter time. The only time you don't eat courage, porridge, courage, porridge in a Chinese tradition or I guess a more Taiwanese tradition is um, during Chinese New Year because this is actually considered a poor man's food back then um, because you know it doesn't require as much rice so people will have porridge more often than actual rice if you have rice that means you are doing really really good because you know you can afford to have rice instead of just you know water down rice but nowadays most people eat rice instead of porridge we eat this um, a lot of time when we're sick or when we feel like it. All right, so I'm just done cutting. I am going to add a little bit of ginger just because I am using pork. You don't have to do it. Um, like I said, do whatever you want. Do You can do chicken, which is also another very popular way to do it. Um, and there's also sweet porridge that you can find on the market as well. Usually those are with red bean or mung beans um, and date. You can find you know, some people will add date or other items to it to make it sweet. Alrighty, I cut up some ginger. I love ginger, so I'm just going to put that in right now. And we're done with cutting on this one too. Alright. I think I will be 
be needing to add a little bit of water to my porridge just because I like a little bit more water to my porridge. It don't have to and I don't want it to get stuck on the bottom. You do need to keep stirring. Um, that's the thing for porridge. Um, you might stuck to the bottom of the pot. Okay, so I'm going to add two more cups of water. Now at this point, you're really just adjusting to your personal flavor. I, it really depends on my mood of the day that sometimes a little bit more water, sometimes it's a little less water. Um, up to you. And if you have children, this is a perfect, perfect um, baby food. Um, or when we were babies, you know, when I was a teeny tiny baby, or when my cousins were babies, um, this is the baby food that my grandma would make, uh, like the first kind of baby food, and they would just they would use add a lot more water to it. Um, so it's kind of a very it's so easy that I almost feel bad for making it because it really just rises in water. But at the same time, it's also really difficult to get get the ratio correct. So the best ratio, like I said, is one one cup of rice and five to seven cup of um, of water, and then you can adjust as you go. Um, but don't 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 if you use too not enough water to it, you are going to be making rice instead of porridge and it might explode not explode like you have too much rice and then the pot might not be enough to cover so because it, it will you know expand All right so once my um i am actually going to add a little salt to my pork so it has a little bit more seasoning to it i might add it a little bit too much but who cares i'm gonna add it in because it's pork, so I do want to make sure it's fully cooked. So that's why I'm adding it in right now. And this should be like a beginner's um, food. Um, if you have, if you don't know what to make, like, or if you have. If your child is going away to college and you're like, you must make, you must know how to make something in order to survive in the world. This is my recommendation because it's easy. You can pretty much add whatever you want to it. Um, and it will, it doesn't have any like grease. So you don't really need to worry about, you know, the flame or anything like that. So if you have no question this is definitely and then you know people usually eat it when they're sick so it's a really good way for you know when you're when you need to take care of yourself that's a that's really really good for you all right so i'm cracking open some egg because i decided to add egg as well because i want to that's good super duper easy it does take a little bit of time to make sure the rice, the longer you cook, the, the, the more uh, disgrained, like the, the more cooked through the rice it's going to be, so it's going to be easier to cook. So if you, personally, if you like to be very, very soft and you can't really taste the rice anymore, then you cook it longer. But some people like it to eat it, like still have a crunchy feeling, then you can. And you can also add breadcrumb um, at the end, um, like crunchy stuff. We use um, like other, um, kind of like cookie, you can add like a cookie, to, not, not sweet cookie, but like a cracker, yes. A cracker to it, then to make it a little bit of crunchy taste it, go ahead. Again, do whatever you want, but just remember the ratio. That's an important thing. So this is the kind of food that your mom can make for you when you're sick, and or you can make it for yourself, or in the kind of food that you can find in a restaurant, because in the restaurant they'll probably have a lot more stuff um, in there. My mom used to make with like crab leg, you know, like fancy stuff, and then we'll be very happy. And it's a perfect food for winter time. And the reason why I decided and why I was craving for it is because it becomes really, really cold over like, the course of a day. All right. 
Okay, back to uh, the name of um, porridge. So porridge is a very common or, or modern way to call it, but some older restaurants still call it congee, C-O-N-G-E-E. -E. And you might find some Cantonese-owned restaurant call it chook, J-O-O-K, chook, because that's a Cantonese pronunciation of it. Um, so, but I, I feel like that would be um, rare, not as easy to find nowadays simply because um, most restaurants that I see nowadays commonly refer to it as porridge. I'm going to add a little bit of salt. And pepper. Season it however you like. And also some rice wine because I had pork in there. And done. And last thing I'm going to add is my egg. I am going to keep continue stirring it simply because I don't want the bottom of the pot to to um to like stick to the bottom of the pot. I'm going to do a little nice swirl thing. It cook really really fast and if you don't have any food at home like you, you run out of food at home just rice and egg that makes that make really really good porridge by itself already you don't really need to add other stuff um, but if you don't have any then you know but if you have other stuff then you want to add in that's totally fine too and that's it our porridge is done Turn the pink flame. It's off and have a big pot. I use, um, I use one and half cup of rice for this one. So I, I actually added seven cup of rice when I was cooking initially, and this is this is quite easy and fancy fancy dinner or lunch as it is but sometimes for breakfast um a lot of Taiwanese family are very used to just eating white porridge so white porridge means like there's nothing there just porridge and then they will have like egg um egg or um bean curd tofu or other items on the side and then they eat it alongside with the curd the, the porridge um, but sometimes when we feel fancy, we'll add stuff in there too. And that's easy because I finish my whole meal in one pot and that's the only thing I need to wash. Um, so it's, it's easy. It's really up to you, however you want to do it. Um, and it's perfect for this weather. And everyone will like it because it's yummy. Alright, so... You don't have to do pork, you can do chicken if you are still fasting, you can definitely use fish and or shrimp or other seafood items and if you don't want to do, um, but I would, if you do use fish and other items, I would definitely add a little rice wine to it um, just because it will reduce the fishy smell a little bit and then maybe ginger. Alright, so awesome. Porridge. Alright, so porridge in Chinese is called zhou. Um, in Taiwanese is called mui. And that's the only two other languages that I know how to speak. I will not butcher other language. So um, in Cantonese it's jok. And yes, that's that's it. That's all I know. So, here is my, my awesome porridge. Right, here we go. Kind of look golden-ish because I added egg to it. So, this is a perfect food when you're sick and you're like home by yourself and no one is here with you, then you will make this a taste of home. It's very good. It's perfect for this weather. I'm going to actually add a little bit more salt to it. I don't feel like it's salty enough. Oh, but you can definitely use chicken stock if you if you want to give it a little bit more flavor. That's definitely fine. Also, chicken stock or beef stock or... I only use water. 
um, just because, you know, why not? It's fine. Do whatever you want. Be free. This, this is kind of like a simple dish that you can definitely do whatever you want. Quick thing about it though, it's definitely a really good dish to teach children. Reason. Um, when I was in elementary school, when we were in the class learning about how heat waves were working, the teacher actually um, gave us a little tea, uh, tea, like alcohol lamp thing, and we put a little the beak to cook on top. They actually gave us rice with water in it, and you can see how the rice um, move in the current of the heat. So it goes like this. Um, so when you're cooking, if you have a clear pot, of course I don't have a clear pot here today, but if you have a clear pot, you can definitely have your children come over and see how the heat work inside the pot and how um, the airflow push um, individual rice around. That's definitely something really cool and it's a really nice science experiment slash cooking um, experience that you can do with your children and they can add basically anything or maybe not chocolate that wouldn't be good but anything else that they want would be awesome so that's conclude our cooking demonstration today and I will see you guys next week bye guys <laughs>